Hospital Porter's Pride and Dignity, Stop the New World Order. Welcome to Herpanwo TV. Now what you, see what you see behind me is a school. It's my old school. It's uh, a place where I spent three years of my life, three years that felt like 30, being indoctrinated and browbeaten into becoming what the Illuminati Occupy Society wants us to be. And for a while it worked. Um, it's, people look back on their school memories either fondly or very, very regretfully. And in my case, it's definitely regretfully. Um, I was an academic flop. I b barely scraped through my English GCSEs. I left the place at 16, um, which is very, I was very glad to get out of it. Um, and um, all I remember there of my life back then was how frightened and how vulnerable and fragile I was as a child and a teenager. This school is called Cheney School and it's still open today as you can see. It's, they've uh, built a few extra bits on since I was there so it can accommodate even more young minds to put through the meat grinder as you see in that famous video The Wall by Pink Floyd. Um, uh, but it's still there, still indoctrinating young minds. I wonder if, I wonder how much has changed. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the, the whole subject of education is a big topic, and I can't, I can't go into it completely. Um, but the, the one aspect I want to concentrate on at the moment is, is school bullying, right? Because um, one thing, one, the one, one of the main rules in that school was that if you're a bigger tougher, stupider kid, you picked on all the little kids, the kids were smaller and uh, weaker and were not so stupid. When I say weak, maybe I shouldn't use the word weaker because it wasn't weaker. The, the, the people who were the weak ones were the bullies themselves, picking on the smaller kids. Because they, would, they, they picked on smaller kids because the kids couldn't or wouldn't fight back. You know, you would also get picked on if you, you could, didn't have to be small, you just had to be unaggressive. Then you get picked on, and the, and the kids doing the picking on were the cowards. They were the weak ones, I think. And what surprised me was um, what happened um, to the children who were in this position, who were being picked on. Now imagine you're a headmaster of school, okay? There are bullies in the school picking on other children. Big meatheads with no brains, just like hurting other people. What do you do with them? Right. Well, I know what I do if I was headmaster. I get them all in my office. I pull their trousers down, whack their asses, and then kick them out the door. And I'd go to the children who were being bullied, and I'd say, "I'm really sorry this has happened to you." I'd offer them compensation. I'd offer their families compensation. That's not what happened here. No, no. What happened here was um, I was immediately enrolled in a special class, right, along with all the other kids who were being picked on, and. It was called Education for Living. Now that's an Orwellian word. That's an Orwellian, a very, very Orwellian term, isn't it? Education for Living. And, and basically, oh, I can't, you see, I have trouble remembering back to this period of my life because it was, it was a long time ago and I was not very happy and I, you know, I basically blotted a lot of it out. Um, we were basically taught how to interact with people. We, were, we played these role-playing games. Um, we were basically, the, the teachers were basically, the, the teachers who ran the course were basically um, queuing up with all kinds of ideas and suggestions and, tr and ways, t ways we could train ourselves and, and educate ourselves and basically changes we could make to our lives to stop us being bullied. Changes we could make, the ones being bullied, to our lives to stop us being bullied by the kids who were doing the bullying. Do you see something? In t there's something inherently wrong with that whole approach. It's, and I actually felt this at the time, although I couldn't verbalise it in those days because I was just like 13 years old. But the, the the inherent problem with that is it's giving out the message that you are the guilty one. You are responsible for and accountable for what's happened to you. Okay, the bullies, do you know absolutely nothing was done about the bullies? They received no special treatment at all. 
you know, they, they received no, certainly no punishment. And they were, um, and they just, they were just allowed to go along, go, um, go about their business quite happily, merrily, punching, kicking, you know, little kids who they could get away with doing. That I am responsible for what's happening to me. I am to blame for my own experiences being bullied. It's what's wrong with me that's the reason I'm being bullied. I mean, what, what a fucking sick thing to say to a child. Although, um, when you think about it, it's not just, it's not just children. This whole attitude, this whole attitude that um, basically it's every man for himself, it's the law of the jungle. And you need to learn to cope in the jungle. If you, if you go out abusing other people, well, that's fine. Because it's every man for himself. Um, it's the people who are being abused, it's their fault for being, being invulnerable, for allowing themselves to be the kind of person who is abused. It's their fault. That attitude is everywhere in the adult world now, it's today more than ever, and it's the basis of the soap operas. I'm going to put a link in the description box where I've written a whole article about this, about, about um, a particular soap opera um, whose name is, well, I won't call it, it's, I call it Tavistock Enders uh, by the uh, Buncombe Broadcasting Corporation, and um, it's in reality TV. Uh, the whole idea is that, I mean, The Weakest Link is, is, is one of the most obscene programmes I've ever seen. And it is, um, it's been repeated in countries around the world. Every, almost every TV service in the world has their own version of The Weakest Link. And it is, it's a, it's a game show, which I'm sure has been designed by psychological manipulators at the Tavistock Institute and other places like that. It's where um, the, the whole aim of the game, the whole, the whole strategy of the game is to be ruthless and acquisitive and form false alliances with people, um, it's, it's all geared towards that, creating that kind of social Darwinist milieu. And like I said, it seems to be everywhere now and it's deliberate. And no one ever stops to question, no one ever stops to question that basically what they're saying to you is the very same thing as it's the rapist's excuse. She was asking for it. In other words, it's not my fault, it's hers. It's hers because she allowed me to do this to me. She made it easy for me, so it's her fault. And people say, oh, isn't that horrible? Horrible rape is saying that. Well, basically, don't... If, if you say that, then just think... You may well be saying the very same thing about other people in, in, the, in a different context. You'll be, you'll be saying the rapist is horrible for saying that, and you're saying, oh, silly little sap, why does he let, why does he let people walk all over him? See, you know, and... Oh, it's, so just think about that. Think about that. If you're if you're using that double standard, you shouldn't be. But if you are using it, it's probably been manipulated into you by this agenda. And it's it's, it's one of the things that upsets me more than anything else. And it's it's just, I, I get a chill just looking at this place. I really do. Oh well. Thanks for, sorry if I, haven't been, if I haven't been very articulate, but it's, it's very emotional coming back here. Thanks for watching Hapanwo TV. Hospital Port as pride and dignity stop the new world order.